Welcome to all the devotees online. Thank you very much for your attendance. We are continuing Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 7, verses 49 to 58. This is the last set of verses that we're concluding. The chapter is entitled, The Son of Drona Punished. Om Jnana Timivandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun militam yena tasme shri guruve maha. Shri chaitanya mano vistam stapitam yena bhutale. Soyam rupa kadamayam vadati swa padangitam. Vandeham shri guru. Shri tapadakamalam shri gurun vaishnavam scha. Shri rupam sagrajatam saganaragunatam itam. Tamsa jivam sadvaitam sabadutam. Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitam Yadevam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gupika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priyam Vanchakalpatarubhyascha kripa sindhu devacha patita nam pavine bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garada Shiva Sari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Sarva Shastra Piyusha, Sarva Vedeka Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadya, Sarva Lokaitri Prada, Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavato Prabhu, Kalibando Didaditya, Shri Krishna Parivartita, Ushimad Bhagavatam. O nectar churn from the ocean of all Vedic scriptures, O most prominent transfer fruit of all the Vedas, O you are enriched with the jewels of all spiritual philosophy conclusions, O you who grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world. O light breath of the Vaishnava devotees, O Lord, you are the sun which has arisen to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga. You are actually Lord Krishna, who has returned amongst us. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshasha Rayate, Sarvada Sarva Sevaya, Shri Krishnaya Namaskute, O Shivan Bhagavatam, I offer respectful obeisance unto you. By reading you, one attains transcendental bliss. For your syllables reign pure love, God upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone for your incarnation of Lord Krishna. Madekabando mat sangim mat guru mat mahadana man nishtaraka mat bhagya mat ananda namastute O Shrimad Bhagavatam, O my only friend, O my companion, O my teacher, O my great wealth, O my deliverer, O my good fortune, O my bliss, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Asadu sadu tadahi natti ni chocha taraka anamun chakada chinmam premna ritkati ospura O Shrimad Bhagavatam, O give our saintliness to the unsaintly, O uplift our very fallen, please do not ever leave me. Please become manifest Mahatma Trota, accompanied by pure love of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Janma Dhyasya Yaton Vayari Tarata, Charte Swabhigna Swarat, Tene Brahma Hidaya, Dikavaye, Muyanti Yatsuraya, 
Tejo Vari Murdam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Tisar Gom Misha Damna Swena Sadani Rastaku Akam Satyam Param Di Mahi O my Lord Chi Krishna, son of us, we are all pervading person out of God. I offer my respectful obeisance to you. I meditate upon Lord Chi Krishna because he's the absolute truth and the primal cause of all causes of creation, sustenance, and destruction that are manifested universes. He's directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he's independent because there is no other cause beyond. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmachi, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the loser representation of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universe is temporarily manifest by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna, who is eternally existent in a transcendental abode which is forever free from the loser representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Rayanol Paisha Sabya Kalavmas Min Yugejana Mandasumanda Mateo Mandabagi Yupadrata. All learned one in this iron age of Kali, men about short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. Narayan Namaskritya Narachevam Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Yasam Pratam Tato Jaya Mudirayat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisance unto the personality of God and Narayan, unto Narayan Narayan, which is the most human being, and unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and the Srila Vyasana of the author. Savai Pumsa Parodharmo Yato Paktira Doksha Jahi, Ahitukya Pritya, Yayatma Sukhri Sediti. Supreme occupation, Dharma for all humanities by which men can attain to loving devotional service under the Transcendental Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janayatya Savairagyam Yanam Chayad Ahitakam. By rendering devotional service under the personality of God at Shri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Padantitat Pravidas Tattam Yachknana Madhvayam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Sabhyate. Then a transcendence who know the absolute truth called this non dual substance, Brahman Paramatma Bhagavan. Shrushru Shosha Rudana Sya Vasudeva Kata Ruchi Syan Mahatsavaya Vipra Punya Tirtani Shevanat. Otherwise, bond sages, by serving those devotees who are completely freed from all vice, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva. Shranutam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Riddham Tastoya Bhatrani Vidu Nati Shuritsatam. Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is Paramatma, Super Soul in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the true devotee, cleanses desire from material enjoyment. From the heart of the devotees who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtues when properly heard and chanted. Mr. Prayashu Badreshu Nittam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatutama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nishtiki by regular attendance in the class in the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service under the personality of God at whose praise or transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. We are continuing Srimad Bhagavatam based on the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, by whose mercy we are blessed and able to associate with Srimad Bhagavatam and with His Bhaktivedanta Prabhupada. So let us cover some feedback from the devotees, uh, verses 35 to 48 from last week's uh, lessons, uh, what you took home, what you uh, found interesting that you like to remember, recollect, any feedback from the devotees. And if you want to unmute, you are most welcome to unmute as well. Siddhi says, in the Vedic system, war is necessary. Violence is important when it's administered in proper conduct and code. Violence for religious principles means for the pleasure of Krishna and not and for the good of humanity according to Krishna's desire. Yes, very important point. To have this concept of nonviolence. This is not really uh, according, uh, according to the Vedas. Violence is there according to proper understanding and proper administ uh, administration. 
One, just like Prabhupada would give the example of a knife. The knife, a surgeon, he can heal someone with a knife and a thief can kill someone with a knife. So the knife is not bad. It depends who's using the knife. So violence is not bad. It depends who's administering, who's using that and for what purpose. So those who are Krishna conscious, those who love Krishna, they will always use violence for the benefit, for the good, for the upliftment of humanity and for pleasing Krishna. Arjuna used violence and he pleased Krishna very, very much. Nalini Kanta and Amavati Radhika says, we like the point about discriminatory power. Yes, we have to use our discrimination. Very, very important. Every day we have the opportunity to use our discrimination. Is it pleasing Krishna, pleasing Srila Prabhupada, or pleasing my senses? Every single moment we can apply this. And this way we can see. This can dictate and tell us whether I'm Krishna conscious. We don't need uh, someone to come and tell you how Krishna conscious you are. You can gauge for yourself by our choices. Madhvi says, we have to use our discriminatory power and not to be sentimental. And there is room for sentiment. There is room for our heart to naturally flow to Krishna, Krishna's devotees, etc. But at the same time, at least in the beginning stages, our discriminatory power has to be very, very strong so that we can understand what's right and what's wrong, what we need to do and what we should not do. Shama says, but Krishna used the situation to kill Ashwatthama to glorify Arjuna. Yes, this whole pastime is really to amplify and glorify Arjuna. And Krishna makes all, all the events in relation to Krishna are simply there to enhance Krishna's relationships with his loving devotees. Mother Les says, reading and knowing transcendental knowledge is good, but even better than this is being able to reflect and apply this knowledge, particularly when con confronted with dilemmas, which we will all face in our life. Because Krishna always tests his devotees, even his dear most devotees. As, so as we progress on the path, we will be tested also. We must know how to address these dilemmas. Very wonderful point. Yes, it's not, it's like in school. Just consider, and we pray that that time doesn't come. Uh, where the educational government or the educational department will say, uh, dear students, we are proud to announce there will be no tests and examination in your schooling career. The pupils will say, yay! And the parents will say, oh no, what a disaster. It will be a disaster. How are you going to know whether the students are learning? And if the students and not going to take an examination, they will not be serious. Now, there is another aspect to that. And that is that just like, uh, you know, we're going through the series, we're going to Shrimad Bhagavatam, and I'm not testing all the students who are, all the devotees who are online, going through this course the series, but I'm expecting the devotees to appreciate and, and, and understand what Srila Prabhupada has given us and take that as a test to say, I'm valuing what Srila Prabhupada is giving me and I'm going to apply it in my life to perfect my life and help perfect others. When that test, when that conviction, when that determination comes from your, uh, from yourself, then you don't need a test. Because 
you are con you are convinced of what Shila Prabhupada has given us and you're embracing this knowledge and you're applying it in your life. Therefore, even if Krishna so-called presents a test, it's not a test. Because all you're going to do is be Krishna conscious because you're already convinced about it without a test. So the test is really, uh, are we embracing, are we taking this knowledge and trying to live this knowledge? And if that's there, then no test uh, that Krishna presents is really a test. And Krishna may use that generally to teach others. It's really for you, it's you know, opportunity to serve. But yes, we should try to practically apply this knowledge. And we will be confronted with different situations, different dilemmas. And we're going to cover when you're placed in such a dilemma, how can you pass? How can you overcome that dilemma? So today we're going to cover that. Bafana Prabhu says, it seems to me from the start when Ashwatthama was brought to Draupadi by Arjuna, that Srila Prabhupada seemed to take a position, if not agreeing with Draupadi. He uses carefully and directed to his arguments, words that got me fascinated and excited. All right, so let's... Make you more excited. Let's hear uh, Bafana Prabhu's in-depth analysis of Prabhupada's uh, purports. And you've, hi you've highlighted a very interesting point, uh, which we're also going to talk about in today's uh, session. And that is that Acharyas can have a different perspective to the same philosophical point because they seen Krishna through their love, through their perspective. So that is also an interesting point. So one sympathetic good lady like Draupadi, but to a good lady like Draupadi, matter not considered on Shastric version, a vision, argue, argues for merit of qualification not on birthright merits. It was all good sentiment for her. Arjuna was taught all of this and therefore Draupadi wished that Arjuna feel obliged by Acharya Drona. That was the opinion of the good lady. Prabhupada then goes to say, it may be argued why Dronacharya, rigid Brahmana should be a teacher in military science. But the reply is that a Brahmana should become a teacher regardless of what his department of knowledge is. So the discrimination is so nicely demonstrated by Srila Prabhupada, so beautiful as though intelligence is used fully. And you'll see this throughout the Acharya's commentaries. Prabhupada is a personality. He's also got a view which is aligned with the parampara and Within the parampara, you find sometimes one acharya will say, this is how I see it. And another acharya will say, this is how I see it. And they're both correct. Sometimes Krishna would do something in relation to his devotees. And one acharya will say, I, I know why Krishna did that because of this situation, this reason. And another acharya will say, no, 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 no. It's actually this reason. And they're both correct because they both love Krishna and Krishna can do something for unlimited reasons. It is not black and white. It is all based on love and love is beyond logic. Love is beyond rationality. Love is beyond black and white. Love is between you and the beloved. You and Krishna. So yes, sometimes Prabhupada would bring in certain uh, angles, certain realizations. He would generally, he generally Prabhupada assimilated all the uh, Acharya's 
philosophical points and gave it in his Bhaktivedanta purports. And sometimes Prabhupada would share his own realizations. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, we find when, like for example, Prabhupada would have certain experience with his devotees, especially in the Western world. Mm -hmm. For example, Prabhupada saw the big wheel, like if you see in the circus, the big wheel. So Prabhupada asked the devotees, what's that? And Prabhupada, they said, Prabhupada, there's a big wheel. And Prabhupada saw you go up and then you come down. You go up and, and then next day uh, in the Bhaktivedanta purports, Prabhupada wrote in the Bhaktivedanta, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, that, you know, this life is like a big wheel. You go up and you come down. You go to the heavenly planets and you come down. A big wheel. And our goal is not to be in the big wheel. Our goal is to go out. So Prabhupada would share his realizations like that also uh, in a very practical way. Hamavati Radhika says, don't want to be in combat. Don't break relationships. Rather be humble so that it's a win-win for everyone. Yes, and this is very important. Here we're seeing a conflict. And the conflict, is, there's actually two conflicts. One is Ashwatthama in relation to the Pandavas. Another is Pandavas against the Pandavas. And the most important thing is they are not fighting each other to break the relationship. And we're going to see how Krishna intervenes and assists so that there's a win-win in this section of verses. It's really about, it's not so much about right and wrong. It's about keeping the relationship with Krishna in the center and encouraging each other to move ahead. Because ultimately we all are connected. We all are family. We are all part and parcels of Krishna. So you know, materially, conditionally, there may be right and wrong. And due to modes of material nature, we are interacting with the modes. And sometimes the modes may get better of us and we may say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing. This is natural. This is the nature of the material world. We have to understand the potentiality of the soul to be a lover of Krishna. Shamananda Prabhu says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for the wonderful weekly session. We can't say thank you enough to Srila Prabhupada for making all this nectar available for us, everyone else, to take advantage of and become perfect. We are eternally indebted, most definitely. Prabhupada Prabhu, I was also astonished to learn deepest mag unanimous relationship of Krishna and Arjuna's friendship. He reveals to him Vishwarupa form for Krishna to come again to resolve this dilemma, which is such a deeper one. Krishna, Krishna came, dear friend, took up the matter just to make a solution. I realize the relationship of friendship between Krishna and Arjuna. Yes, it's sweet, it's wonderful. And Prabhupada reminds us again and again, we all have a friendly relationship with Krishna. Ashwatthama almost destroyed the whole dynasty of the Pandavas greatly. That uh, Parikshit Maharaj was in the womb and saw Krishna as he got protected from the danger of the weapon advanced by Ashwatthama. Yes, and we're coming to that. Vasaraj Prabhu says, one who does not take to Krishna consciousness is a killer of the soul, Atmaha. And that violence is unfortunate and we don't want that violence. So we should not administer that violence upon us. Thank you very much for all the devotees' wonderful feedback. Let us now proceed to the last section of this section, the son of Drona punished. This last section in relation to the arguments regarding the killing of Ashwatthama, we have two sections, 49 to 50, agreement and disagreement with Draupadi's judgment. Note, agreement and disagreement. Mother Les says, what is beautiful about these texts is that it's repetition of the ending message of Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, you have heard me attentively, now do what you wish to do where we have been continually been encouraged to step into and make our individual identity shine by our choice through our relationship we build with Krishna. Yes, mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. And 
the more we link, the more we contemplate about these things, the more we're able to see uh, how the same message is coming from different angles, from different perspectives. Robert says, Krishna Khan is very simple for the simple and complicated for the compli complicated. It's very simple. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are part and parcel of Krishna. You are servant of Krishna. Surrender to Krishna. Your life will be happy. Full stop. And Krishna loving us makes, uh, performs all these wonderful pastimes which are documented, which are now manifested incarnated in the form of Bhagavatam so that we can be reminded of this again and again and again until we get it. When we get it, we now come to a higher level of reciprocation with Krishna. And when we achieve that higher level, we then go to a higher level. And in this way, our level of loving reciprocation with Krishna increases deeper and deeper and deeper and that is why Krishna consciousness cannot be dry and hackneyed. If it's dry and hackneyed and if it's not exciting, you are not plugged in, you are not applying the process, you are not connected, you are not being Krishna conscious. So by the association of Bhagavatam, by the mercy of the Bhagavatam, by the mercy of the personalities we are associating and hearing through the Bhagavatam, by the mercy of Krishna and by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the Vaishnavas, we can get the blessings and the mercy to uh, connect, to develop, to nurture our relationship more and more. And then the final section, 52 to 58, uh, how Arjuna resolves this dilemma. So we mentioned that this section is covering a moral or spiritual dilemma where it's not just right or wrong, but both left and right or both parts of the confrontation is correct. And therefore you cannot choose either one, you have to choose both. And how do you agree with both? It's contradictory. It doesn't happen in the material world. In the material world, there's duality, right and wrong. In the spiritual world, there is no duality. So in the spiritual world, there is no right and wrong. In the spiritual world, right is right and wrong is right. Because it's all based on loving relationship with Krishna. For example, Mother Yashoda is glorifying Krishna. The devotees are glorifying Krishna. That's right. In the spiritual world, wonderful. And Kutila and Jotila, they are calling Krishna bad names and criticizing and condemning Krishna in the spiritual world. And that is right. From the material world, it seems one is glorifying and one is criticizing, condemning Krishna. One is good, one is bad, but actually both are glorious. Both give pleasure to Krishna. Both are there for intensifying loving relationship with Krishna. We find that there are gopis and assistants of Shimati Radhawani who are making arrangements for her to meet Krishna. Glorious. And then there are devotees Jotila, Kotila, and the family, they're trying to uh, stop Radhavani from meeting Krishna. And on one level, that is also glorious because separation intensifies the pleasure of union. So both are wonderful. When we are placed in a situation where both situations, both perspectives, may be correct and you don't know how to select or which side you know to take and you want to resolve that dilemma then you can take shelter of krishna and Prabhupada says accept krishna as your friend 
you will be happy. This is the message of Krishna consciousness. Just contemplate on that statement. One statement of Srila Prabhupada. Very profound, very deep. The truth. They say in this material world, uh, we have, it's the information age. Well, now with the internet, you get misinformation age because you don't know what's right and what's wrong. You have no clue about all the misinformation you're getting fed amidst all the information that's there. And therefore, it creates further confusion. The only truth that will survive the onslaught of Kali Yuga is Srimad Bhagavatam. And therefore, Prabhupada directing us to taking shelter of Krishna. And not just taking shelter of Krishna, but accepting Krishna as a friend. And a friend in need is a friend indeed. Therefore, whenever we're in difficulty, whenever we're in a moral spiritual dilemma, when all, whenever we need help, then dial your friend. Now, someone may say, how do I dial my friend? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Vama, Hare Vama, Vama Vama, Hare Hare. And Madridas is telling me if that doesn't work, <coughs> then I try the next mantra and we'll share with you a pastime in relation to <coughs> in relation to the next mantra. So there was a devotee, a Russian devotee. Her name was Purnamasi, and she was she's a dedicated servant of Srila Prabhupada, spreading Krishna consciousness in Russia, and she, she, was, uh, she was encouraging so many people to chant Hare Krishna. The KBG, the KGB got hold of her. And when the KGB uh, caught her, imprisoned her, and they told her to stop. <clears throat> well, in fact, they first caught her, they told her to stop, and she obviously did not stop. So eventually they put her in prison. <clears throat> and in prison, she started preaching and continuing, continued, continued her preaching and helping, encouraging souls to chant Hare Krishna. Eventually, the KGB decided we need to you know, stop this and we need to brainwash her. So what they did was they got a, they got somebody who's involved in witchcraft to come and bewitch Punamasi, so that she get brainwashed and stop preaching Krishna consciousness. So they got this, uh, this black witch, this person was involved in uh, black magic, etc. with an assistant. They put Punamasi in a cell, they tied her to the chair, and this witch went to work, um, invoking evil spirits and spells and created a evil demonic creature, which Purnamasi explains, um, you know, it was black and dark and this demonic spirit was slowly overpowering her. As soon as a demonic spirit that was created starting, started to overpower her and go into her, she started to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. She was chanting and still this evil spirit was going and going deeper and deeper. And slowly she was you know, losing consciousness. And then she decided I'm going to chant and invoke the mercy of Lord Nishingadev. So then she started praying to Lord Nishingadev and chanted Nishinga pranams. And this evil spirit was overpower, was becoming even more overpowering and practically now uh, consuming her consciousness and she was now about to go unconscious. And then she decided I need to take shelter of Srila Prabhupada and she started to chant Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Chinyamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine 
Nirvishesa Sunivari Pastatada Satari Nen. Soon as she chanted a Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra, the effect of the spirit started to wane very quickly and immediately the witch stopped. She packed her bag and she was about to leave. And the KGB stopped and said, where are you going? Why are you leaving? You haven't stopped, you haven't finished your business. You need to finish uh, brainwashing her. And the witch said, nope, I'm not interested. I'm out of here and says, no, 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 you have to. And they say, she said, I see, you do not see. And they, see, and they said, see what? And the witch said, don't you see? Hmm? There's this old man with a stick. Hmm? And he's wagging his finger. You know, like when you, when the parents, you know, tell the child, be careful, don't be naughty. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada is uh, wagging his tail, preaching and telling her, you're messing with the wrong people. And immediately, and she said, I have no power to stop him. And she left. Srila Prabhupada, ki jai. So, when we need help, help is available. Take shelter of Srila Prabhupada, take shelter of Panchatattva, take shelter of the devotees, take shelter of Lord Nishingadev, take shelter of Krishna, take shelter of the spiritual master. So many personalities are there to take shelter, take shelter of the acharyas. And you can take shelter in so many ways in the form of songs, etc in the form of the Bhagavatam, in the form of prayers, in so many ways we can take shelter, just in the form of kirtan. We have to understand our shortcomings and weakness. That is humility and depend. To depend on Krishna is not a weakness. It is a glorious quality. So let's cover 49 to 51. 49. Suto vacha dharmyam nayayam sakrunam nirvya kilam samam mahat raja dharmam suto rajnyam pratyananda vacho dvija. Sutta Goswami said, O Brahmanas, King Yudhishthir fully supported the statements of the Queen which were in accordance with the principles of religion and were justified, glorious, full of mercy and equity and equity and without duplicity. So Yudhishthira Maharaj sided with Draupadi. We find Krishna already said, Arjuna, kill him. Yudhishthira Maharaj is now siding with Draupadi and from, because Yudhishthira Maharaj is, is Dharma Raj and he's the king, he's the emperor of the whole world. So from Yudhishthira Maharaj's perspective, Draupadi is perfectly correct according to the religious principles and her glorious qualities full of compassion without duplicity. Uh, she's not, you know, she, she's not boiling in this, Turmoil of revenge. Yeah, just see what you did to my children. I will do worse. No, this is not devotional. This is not love. This is not a devotee. Devotee means one who's transcendental to the modes uh, of material nature. And here we see Yudhishthira Maharaj perfectly aligning with Draupadi. Prabhupada summarizes. Uh, we covered in the verses last week six reasons that Draupadi gave why she, she did not want Ashwatthama to be killed. And Prabhupada summarizes those qualities. This is where we got those qualities or even from in terms of uh, Draupadi's reasons. Maharaj Dishti, who was the son of Dharmaraj or Yamaraj, fully supported the words of Queen Draupadi in asking Arjuna to release Ashwatthama. One should not tolerate the humiliation of a member of a great family. Arjuna and his family were indebted to the family of Dronacharya because Arjuna's learning the military science from him. 
If ingratitude was shown to such a benevolent family, it would not be at all justified from a moral standpoint. So gratitude is extremely important. And Draupadi is making that point that you learned the arts. How can you now do anything harmful on any level to Dronacharya and his family? The wife of Dronacharya was the half body of a great soul, must be treated with compassion. And she should not be put into grief because of her son's death. That is compassion. Such statements by Draupadi were are without duplicity because action should be taken with full knowledge. The feeling of equal, equality was there because Draupadi spoke out of her personal experience. A barren woman cannot understand the a barren woman cannot understand the grief of a mother. Draupadi was herself a mother, and therefore her calculation of the depth, depth of Kripi's grief was quite to the point. And it was glorious because she wanted to show proper respect to a great family. So it's a very, very glorious quality. The pure devotees are para dukkha dukhi. They're not suffering, but yet they suffer when they see the suffering of others. That is a glorious quality. Here Draupadi was suffering the separation, the pain of losing her sons. And she did not want Creepy uh, to go through, uh, the Creepy to go through that same suffering. Uh, this is glorious. This is glorious. Text 50. Nakula Sahadevascha Yuyudano Dananjaya Bhagavan Devaki Putro Ye Chanye Yascha Yoshita Nakula and Sadev, the younger brother of the king, younger brothers of the king, and also Satyaki, Arjuna, the personality of God, person of God at Lord Shikrishna, the son of Devaki and the ladies and the and, and others all unanimously unanimously agreed with the king. So now, not only Yudhishthir, but Yanaku, Sadev, Satyaki, Arjuna, the personality of God, even Krishna, and the other ladies and others, they all agreed with Draupadi. So now consider, look at this. Initially, Krishna said, kill him. Now Krishna also says, don't kill him. Now, if you in that situation, hold on, Krishna, you just said I must kill. Now you're also saying don't kill. And you, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So both is correct? What is this? During the, Bhagavad, the, 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 the Battle of Kurushetu and Arjuna, when Krishna was speaking Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna told Krishna, my Lord, you're giving equivocal instructions. You're telling me you know, do this, you know, uh, work and cultivate knowledge. You know, fight and cultivate knowledge. Cultivate knowledge means don't fight. Work, fight means action. So this, 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 your directions are equivocal. They seem contradictory. You want me to do both? How is that possible? So in this situation also, Arjuna is going to be in a dilemma. Because he also doesn't want to kill. Krishna's originally said kill. Now he's also saying, don't, yes, I agree. And all the family members and Pandavas, they all agree with Draupadi. Text 51. Tatra ham marsito bimas tasya shreyan vada smrita na bartu nat manas charte Yohan Suktam Shishun Vrita Bhima, however, angrily disagreed with them and recommended killing this culprit who had murdered sleeping children 
for no purpose and for neither his nor his master's interest. Perfectly true. I mean, Ashwatthama was an immortal soul. He's, he's Chiranjivi, he's all powerful. He's not an ordinary person. He's a powerful warrior. And yet, he acted in such a, a demeaning, this uh, uh, um, degrading mentality and act of killing sleepless, sleeping children. It's a different story if they had, you know, the ability to protect themselves. They were awake. They were able to fight, but sleeping. This is for it's it's like totally for a kshatriya, a warrior. This is they call it. This uh, they call it honor. Um, this this honor. This is this honor to the highest degree. So for Shatriya, it's uncalled for, and therefore Bhima said, "No mercy." Now Bhima is also a devotee of Krishna, and the other Pandavas and all, all the other devotees also. Devotees, they, they, they sided not to kill, and Bhima sided to kill. Now, what is the situation? They're both devotees, and they both seem to have perfect logical arguments and reasons. It's not like they, you know, to, they, out of selfish interest and duplicity, they are saying things. No, from the heart, perfectly scriptural, perfectly shastric. So let's see how the situation unfolds. 52 to 58. Arjuna has to find a solution. Text 52. Nisha, nishamya bhima gadidam dropadyas chachatur puja alokya vadanam sakyo Idam aha asan eva chaturbuja, the four armed one, or the personality of Godhead, after hearing the words of Bhima, Tropari, and others, saw the face of his dear friend Arjuna, and he began to speak as if smiling. So here we see a beautiful picture of Krishna. He's two armed. And why is Sutta Goswami and Srila Vyasadev narrating and telling us Chaturbuja, formed one? Krishna is not formed, Krishna is two armed. But right there, amidst this situation, you can understand the volatility, how volatile this is. The son, five sons, not one, not two, not three, five were killed. Dropad is lamenting. Arjuna goes and captures Ashwatthama. While Arjuna is going and capturing Ashwatthama, the other Pandavas are also lamenting. Arjuna comes with Ashwatthama. He is now there. And this discussion, this very volatile discussion. Kill, don't kill. Yes, kill him. No, don't kill him. Everyone is saying, don't kill. Bhima, he's got strength of 10,000 elephants. He's taking his club and he's saying, no, kill. Don't even spare him. Few seconds to breathe. Kill him. So it's volatile. And because of the volatility, Krishna takes Chaturbuja form. Prabhupada in the purport says, Lord Shri Krishna had two arms. And why is and why he is designated as four armed is explained by Shiraswami. Both Bhima and Draupadi held opposite views about killing Ashwatthama. Bhima wanted him to be immediately killed, immediately. Whereas Draupadi wanted to save him. 
We can imagine Bhima ready to kill while Draupadi is obstructing him. And in order to prevent both of them, the Lord discovered another two arms. Originally, the primal Lord Shri Krishna displays only two arms, but in his Narayan feature, he exhibits four. In his Narayan feature, he resides with his devotees and Vaikuntha planets, while in his original Shri Krishna feature, he resides in Krishna Loka planet far, far above the Vaikuntha planets in the spiritual sky. Therefore, if Shri Krishna is called Chaturbhuja, there is no contradiction. If, he, if need be, he can display hundreds of arms as if exhibited, as he exhibited in his Vishwa Rupa shown to Arjuna. Therefore, one who can display hundreds and thousands of arms can also manifest four whenever needed. When Arjuna was perplexed about what to do with Ashwatthama, Lord Krishna, as the very dear friend of Arjuna, voluntarily took up the matter just to make a solution, and he was smiling also. So Krishna intervened, two arms to protect Draupadi, to hold Draupadi, and two arms to hold Bhima. You know, like when, 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 when a situation becoming volatile, then you have to intervene and says, wait, wait, stop, 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 you know, both of you, relax. Take you know, deep breaths, pause, shanti, shanti, shanti. So Krishna, amidst this situation, with his two arms, two arms to protect Bhima and two arms for Draupadi and the devotees. And in this way, Krishna then looks at Arjuna and smiles. Prahasan Nivabharata, even in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, when when, when Krishna saw Arjuna surrenders to him and accepts him as a spiritual master, Krishna smiles. He's going from being a friend to being a teacher. So here also Arjuna, Krishna is smiling to Arjuna because Krishna knows the situation. Krishna is putting Arjuna in a situation of glorifying to, to show the world Arjuna's understanding of religious principles and duty. In this wonderful pastime where Krishna is revealing his Chaturbhuja form, intervening, helping the situation, Krishna is taking pleasure in this Leela, in this pastime, in reciprocating with his devotees. And he comes to help in the form of Chaturbhuja. So this is glorious. Prabhupada very often uses this statement, God helps those who help themselves. So Prabhupada in Bhagavad Gita, the purport 624 Prabhupada says, similarly, the practice of yoga, especially bhakti yoga in Krishna consciousness may appear to be a very difficult job. But if anyone follows the principles with great determination, the Lord will surely help, for God helps those who help themselves. Krishna is willing to help always. The question is, are you willing to take the help? Are you serious about your Krishna consciousness, about your relationship with Krishna? Because if you're serious about your relationship with Krishna, Krishna will be there at every point in your life. No matter how disastrous the situation may be, Krishna's there. Now, yes, Krishna will not necessarily resolve the situation the way you want the situation to be resolved. But Krishna's help will always lead to a perfect solution, guaranteed. If we call out to Krishna in, in, in desperation, we cry out to Krishna in desperation for help, we may not be presented with a solution that we think will help 
the situation, but guaranteed the solution that Krishna presents, which may take time or which may not, we may not even see, will always take you out and put you in a better position. When I see my own life of Krishna consciousness from the beginning, and this is a good exercise to take your life even before coming to Krishna consciousness and start to contemplate and see whenever you were in difficulties or even sometimes you're not in difficulty, but there's some inspiration, very strong inspiration that comes from inside. Do this, go here, press this, see that, take that. It, 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 that inspiration, that impetus is coming from Krishna. Why? Because of your determination and your sincerity to connect, to strengthen your relationship with Krishna. And in some cases, you may not see it as Krishna, in, in Krishna's, you may not see Krishna's hand. After some time, you look back and you say, hmm, that was Krishna's hand. Just see how amazing Krishna uh, made arrangements. Just see how Krishna intervened. Just see how Krishna helped me. And I didn't recognize it then, but I should be grateful now that I see. And this way I can thank Krishna. Thank you, my Lord, for uh, making that arrangement, for opening that door for allowing me to see it like this, etc. So Krishna's help will always be there. In Chaitanya Chattamrita Adi Lila 150, 1 point, uh, 1, uh, chapter one, X 50. The English maxim that God helps those who help themselves is also applicable in the transcendental realm. Transcendental realm. There are many instances in the revealed scriptures of the personality of God had acting as a spiritual master from within. The personality of Godhead was a spiritual master who instructed Brahma, the original living being, in the cosmic creation. We're gonna, this point will come up again and again. We're going to come in the second and third canto, where Lord Brahma is creating. or he, does, he, he appears on the lotus and he doesn't know what to do. He's confused. He's, what am I meant to do? It's dark here. What is my purpose? And Krishna instructs him. Krishna reveals the knowledge to him. So we find so many situations like this where uh, Krishna is ready, not only in the material realm, but also on a transcendental realm. Krishna is ready to help in so many ways because Krishna loves, it's a relationship. And relationship means reciprocation. So Krishna wants to reciprocate. The devotees want to serve Krishna. Krishna wants to serve his devotees. It's a reciprocal. It's not a one way. It's not a, you know, yes, you serve me and you set up my senses and, you know, that's all. Till you die, till you're doomed. No. It's a loving reciprocation. It's a loving relationship. You are interested in Krishna's pleasure and Krishna's interested in your pleasure. In yoga as action, uh, Prabhupada in the chapter, perfect, uh, perfection of uh, the path of perfection. In Bhagavad Gita 9.22, Krishna says that he provides for his devotees by giving them what they lack and preserving what they have. People are very fond of saying that God helps those who help themselves, but they do not understand that helping yourself means putting yourself under Krishna's protection. What a wonderful statement by Srila Prabhupada. They do not understand that helping yourself means putting yourself under Krishna's protection. Sometimes we you know, say, yes, you must do things to protect yourself. Otherwise, how is God going to help you if you don't help yourself? I was giving another angle. Really, helping yourself means just give yourself to Krishna. When you put yourself under Krishna's protection, uh, then Krishna can do anything. Krishna can do miracles. Not only two arms, not two, not only two extra arms, millions of arms instantly. Krishna was there 
during this confrontation. And in every one of our confrontations, Krishna is there as a super soul and Krishna is there uh, in every atom. Krishna is there personally uh, watching over us. It's our faith that will dictate who we take shelter of. Now, somebody may attack you and you may in that attack, let's say right now, somebody may attack. And in that attack, you may forget all about Krishna. I was speaking to the not devotees and I was saying, somebody attacks, you run. But hold on, why are you running? Yes, Krishna. In the form of the Bhagavatam, all you have to do is take shelter of the Bhagavatam and you'll be fully protected. But you're running. Krishna is there and you're running. And that may happen. But here's the beautiful, here's the beautiful part of this. You may run and you may be saved. And then you look back and you think, you know what? I did not call out to Krishna. Bhagavatam is right there in my house and I'm taking shelter of every other fallible solution instead of taking shelter of Bhagavatam. Krishna is right there. And if Krishna is right there and if I have firm faith and I embrace Krishna, then what harm can anyone do? when Krishna is there. And if Krishna so desire, so be it. That conviction, that realization can come afterwards. I go through an experience and then I look back just like a test and I look back and say, wow, I didn't think of Krishna. Or it may be that I thought of Krishna and then I forgot Krishna. It may be so many variables. The point is, that Krishna will put us through situations who allow us to realize these aspects more and more and more until we completely convinced that Krishna's help is the ultimate. So there's never any failure in our practice of Krishna consciousness. There is only feedback. And when we get that feedback, Maybe after some time, maybe through the Bhagavatam, maybe through Prabhupada's Bhaktivedanta purports, maybe through devotees. When we get that feedback, feedback, we should reflect and see, yes, next time I want to be more prepared. Next time I want to try to take shelter of Krishna. And when the next time comes and you take shelter of Krishna, Krishna will be smiling. So Krishna's help is always there. In a lecture, Prabhupada says in, a, in Hawaii, because his name is Anumanta, without his sanction, you cannot have anything. Just like I am moving this hand, it is by his sanction. As soon as he stops, his sanction immediately paralyzed. And still, we are proud. I have got my hands. I have got my eyes. What is the use of your eyes? Unless God helps you to see what is the value of your eyes, practically you see. Unless there is sunshine, what is the value of your eyes? So, but still, we are so foolish, so full. We are thinking, we, can you show me God? And what power you have got to see? First of all, consider. Then you'll see God. You cannot see even what ordinary things, what to question of seeing God. So this realization needs to dawn upon us. We need a Krishna's help, but Krishna's helping in every other way that we don't even realize. In Bhagavad Gita in the 15th chapter, so many beautiful verses showing how Krishna is maintaining us, Krishna is helping us even to digest our food. He's helping us keep our body's heartbeat, heart pumping, blood. So many ways Krishna is helping, inconceivable ways, countless ways God is helping. And if we acknowledge that, 
we submit ourselves more and more to Krishna. That is helping us even if we're not surrendered. What to talk about when we surrender? Why wouldn't Krishna help those devotees who are lovingly, with wholeheartedly, without duplicity, surrendering to his lotus feet? Krishna will always be there. So I'd like to share another pastime in Chaitanya Chattamrita in relation to Kala Krishna Das. He was traveling with Shijan Mahaprabhu to South India. Personal servant of Shijan Mahaprabhu, traveling with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And here we see the state of Kala Krishna Das. He was alert, allured by the Bhattacharyas and uh, got distracted by the gypsies. And Lord Ched Mahaprabhu is dragging him by the Sika and pulling him back to shelter. And the beautiful purport, uh, verse in purport, Shri Mahaprabhu then says, now that I brought him here, I'm asking him to leave. Now he can go wherever he likes, for I no longer for I am no longer responsible for him. He was traveling with Shri Chit Mahaprabhu. He was Shri Chit Mahaprabhu's personal servant. He got distracted, got alert, and he's in the renounced order. And he's now associating with a gypsy. Shri Chit Mahaprabhu shows compassion and drags him out of that situation. And then says, I am no more responsible for you. Purport. Kala Krishna Das was influenced and alerted by the nomads and gypsies or gypsies who enticed him with women. Maya is so strong that Kala Krishna Das left Shuchit Mahaprabhu's company to join gypsy women. Even though a person may associate with Sri Chit Mahaprabhu, he can be alert by Maya and leave the Lord's company due to his slight independence. Only one who is overwhelmed by Maya can be so unfortunate as to leave Sri Chit Mahaprabhu's company. Yet, unless one is very conscientious, the influence of Maya can drag one away, even though he may be the personal assistant of Shri Chet Mahaprabhu. If that's not warning enough, if that's not you know, serious enough, or if it's not highlighting the danger of Maya, I don't know what will. You are personally with God. You are with Shri Chet Mahaprabhu. And yet, you can be swayed away. Why? Because you always have slight, minute independence. And what to speak of others? The Bataharis used to increase their numbers by using women to allure outsiders. This is factual <coughs> evidence showing that it is possible at any time to fall down from Lord's association. One need only misuse his little independence. Once fallen and separated from the Supreme Personality of God's association, one becomes a candidate for suffering in the material world. Although rejected by Sri Chit Mahaprabhu, Kala Krishna Das was given another chance as the following verses relate. So Sri Chit Mahaprabhu did not want to do anything with Kala Krishna Das and said he should leave. But the devotees got together uh, and they were very compassionate. And uh, they got together and on behalf uh, of Kala Krishna Das, they went to Shichat Mahapu and they begged, please, please um, bestow his, you know, bestow your mercy. And they made arrangements that he continue. Uh, he was given service. But this is a warning. Uh, we should not uh, play with Maya. We should be very, very, very careful. Even if you were God, you cannot be helped because of your minority dependence. I want to talk about if you're not with God and you're playing with Maya, you will be sucked in. You will be covered 
and throne far, far away. Therefore, always uh, be conscientious about the influence of Maya. Always understand I need strong, powerful association. Always. So that God can help me if I want that help. But if you want to misuse your mind your independence, even God cannot help. 53 and 54. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Now Krishna is giving his instruction. Brahma Bandur Nahantavya Atatai Vadarhanam Maye Voba Maye Vobayam Aman Amanatam Paripatya. Nushashanam Guru Prati Shutam Satyam Yatat Santa Yatat Sant Va Yata Priyam Priyam Chabima Se Nasya Panchalya Mayam Evacha. The personality of God at Shri Krishna said, A friend of a Brahmana is not to be killed, but he is an aggressor, he must be killed. All these rulings are in the scriptures and you, speaking to Arjuna, should act accordingly. You have to fulfill your promise to your wife and you must also act to the satisfaction of Bhima Sen and me. So Lord Krishna is now giving Arjuna his instruction. Yes, he should not be killed because he's a friend of a Brahmana. Yes, he should be killed because he's an aggressor. You promised that you're gonna kill Ashwatam and bring his head. Um, Dropadi does not want him to be killed. Bhima wants him to be killed. I want him to be killed and I don't want him to be killed. Now, you act according to the rulings of scripture. So Arjuna is now put into the situation where he needs to resolve this dilemma. Arjuna, what? Arjuna was perplexed because Ashwatthama was to be killed as well as spared according to different scriptures cited by different persons. As a Brahma Bandhu or a worthless son of a Brahmana, Ashwatthama was not to be killed, but he was at the same time an aggressor also. And according to the rulings of Manu, the, an aggressor, even though he may be a Brahmana, what to speak of an unworthy son of a Brahmana is to be killed. Rondacharya was certainly a Brahmana in the true sense of the term, but because he stood in the battle, he was killed. But although Ashwatthama was an aggressor, he stood without any fighting weapons. The ruling is that an aggressor, when he is without weapons or chariot, cannot be killed. All these were certainly were certainly perplexities. Besides that, Arjuna had to keep the promise he had made before Draupadi just to pacify her. And he also had to satisfy both Bhima and Krishna, who advised killing him. This dilemma was present before Arjuna, and the solution was awarded by Krishna. So Lord Krishna instructed Arjuna what he needs to do and the solution is also there. This is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. If Krishna wants you to do some service, no matter how inconceivably difficult, impossible it may be, Krishna will also empower you because Krishna is all powerful. We should simply have the faith that whatever Krishna desires, I am hopeless, useless, but I'm going to put my full effort and pray to Krishna to empower one. We see the early devotees, disciples of Srila Prabhupada, even Srila Prabhupada himself displayed this. They ventured on this impossible task to spread Krishna consciousness. But they were dedicated and fully convinced that we simply have to try our best and Krishna will deliver the results inconceivably. 55. Sutta Uvacha Arjuna Saha Sajnaya Harer Hardam Atasina Manim jaharam murdanyam vijasya saha murdajam. Sudhu Goswami said, just then Arjuna could understand the motive of the Lord. 
and by his equivocal orders. And thus, with his sword, he severed both hair and jewel from the head of Ashwatthama. So Arjuna, understanding Krishna's instruction, empowered to use his intelligence, appropriately understood what to do, and cut his hair and the jewel from his forehead. Robert says, contradictory orders for different persons are impossible to carry out. Therefore, a compromise was selected by Arjuna by his sharp intelligence. And he separated the jewel from the head of Ashwatthama. This was as good as cutting off his head. And yet his life was saved for all practical purposes. Here Ashwatthama is indicated as twice born. Certainly he was twice born, but he fell down from his position and therefore he was properly punished. So Arjuna used his sharp intelligence. And here we see uh, Lord Krishna with his forearms um, protecting Bhima, stopping Bhima, intervening. Arjuna very intelligently used his sharp intelligence. This sharp intelligence comes by practicing Krishna consciousness and by Krishna's mercy. If we simply learn and follow the most intelligent, we become intelligent. Krishna is the most intelligent. He's giving instructions in Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, if we simply embrace the intelligence of Krishna, we become intelligent. On our own, it's very difficult. But by taking shelter of Krishna, Prabhupada says, uh, for us, our opinion is whatever Krishna decides, full stop. If we accept uh, what Krishna's instructions, our life becomes perfect. So Arjuna was very, very intelligent. He could understand from all the Vedic instructions how to act, how to satisfy both parties. So here we find a very beautiful situation where both parties are correct and Arjuna is able to satisfy both parties. A win-win solution. So we may be in many confronting situations, friend to friend, family to friend, uh, husband and wife, uh, parents and children, etc. Boss and um, employee and employer, so many situations. We should always firstly understand the volatility of being under the modes of material nature. Krishna was here to intervene and keep the situation peaceful with his forms. We should understand that in a volatile situation, we want to reduce the influence of the modes of ignorance and passion and come to the mode of goodness to make a decision that is sound and that is win-win. Sometimes it may mean to put a pause button, take a break. And there may be the situation that we don't have the sharp intelligence to understand what's right or what's wrong and how to create a win-win situation. Therefore, uh, get advice, do a brainstorm, see what's possible. Uh, approach uh, Guru Sado and Shastra in this way, you can brainstorm and see what's the best situation so we can have a win-win. And both parties should have this consciousness, especially as devotees understanding this pastime. So whenever we're in a situation, we should reflect on this pastime, that how can I have a win-win situation? Not a how can I be right? How can I promote my right decision? No, because they could be both right. One devotee wants to serve in this way and you want to serve in another way and both are correct because both are coming from a platform of wanting to please uh, Krishna and both may be right. So can you get a middle ground? Can you have a win-win situation? I normally, when I discuss this point, I normally share pastime. 
And you know, if we were having a live online uh, live session, I would get two devotees to enact this. In Mauritius, uh, I'm sure Mother Achina Sidi uh, Maharaji would recollect this. Uh, I, I think she was, I'm not sure whether she was involved in this past time, maybe. Uh, so in this dr drama, mm -hmm. you coming to cook and you come into the kitchen. So you, uh, you know, you're doing Raj Boga. So your service is to make the juice. And another devotee comes and that devotee wants to do the halva. And you come both in, you both come into the daily kitchen and you both at the same time see the orange that's there. A devotee who says, who's thinking I want to make orange juice for Krishna immediately goes and grabs the orange to make the orange juice. And the other devotee is thinking I want to make halva, I want to make orange rind halva and goes also to grab the orange. And you're both now grabbing the orange and starting to fight. So Madhachana Siddhi says, yes, she was in the drama. So now you start fighting. No, I want the orange. No, I, I, I saw the orange first. No, I, I, you know, I have a whole turmoil with the orange. And then the head pujari comes and says, what's going on? No, Prabhu, I saw the orange first. I grabbed the orange first. No, I wanted to make the juice. No, I wanted to make the alva with the orange rind. So then the temple president says, see, you want to make the orange juice? No problem. You take the inside and you make, you can make orange juice. You want to make orange halva? No problem. You can take the outside, grate the orange, and you can get your orange rind and you can make orange, make the halva. Both, you know, both parties are happy. So that is a win-win. Instead of just, you know, seeing your agenda, try to understand the, the, the opposite, uh, the intention of the devotee, opposite side, and see. Because if you just step back, you could say both said, oh yeah, that's true. We both can use the orange. And in this way, uh, we both can serve Krishna and be satisfied. It was unnecessary to create a turmoil, increase the modes, you know, and fight over the orange. So we should keep that in mind. Just like Arjuna, use our sharp intelligence. And again, this is the, this is the glory of the process and the path of Krishna consciousness. You may be put in the situation and you may fail or think you fail, which is okay. You may, you know, not have selected a win-win and you, you know, selected a lose-lose or lose-win, uh, etc. Whatever the situation is and, you know, you are, you are so pressurized and you know, in this mode of passion, ignorance, and you're going through this whole anxiety and turmoil and you come home and you can't even chant Hare Krishna. And then after a week, you think back and you think, oh, hold on. I, I could have done this. I should have done this. Now you start praying to Krishna and you can get ideas. And those ideas can reinforce your intelligence for the next situation that can present itself. So always consider. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about encouraging everyone on the path of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada had this amazing, amazing ability to encourage everyone and not just uh, you know, take sides. Text 56. Vimucha, vim, vimucha rasa nam badam balahatya hata prabham e jasa maini nahinam sabiram nira yapat ni sibiram nira yapayat Thus, been insulted and humiliated, Ashwatthama was simultaneously killed and not killed by the influence, by the intelligence of the Lord, intelligence of Lord Krishna and Arjuna. 
purport Prabhupada writes, thus being insulted and humiliated, Ashwatthama was simultaneously killed and not killed by the intelligence of Lord Krishna and Arjuna. I think I missed, that's the same verse. Robert gives a small purport. Maybe somebody can just have a look at, I think it's a, it's a single line, which I forgot to paste there. Uh, maybe somebody can just type uh, the small purport that Chila Prabhupada writes there, we can get to that. So, <clears throat> okay, in fact, let's just quickly do this. Yeah, actually it's the same. So that's 56, right, Prabhupada says in 56, okay, I see what happened here. So we, I replaced the translation. So the uh, translation is, he, Ashwatthama, had already lost his bodily luster due to in due to uh, infant, infant, uh, infinite side. And now moreover, having lost the jewel from his head, he lost even more strength. Thus, he was unbound and driven out of the camp. So uh, here, uh, this is the translation of the verse and this is the purpose. So sorry about that error. Okay, so he lost his luster because uh, of the, this jewel. Uh, we're gonna talk about this at the end. Uh, and he lost his strength and he was driven out of the camp. And we'll speak about uh, Ashwatthama, this jewel and his specific life at the end. X 57. Bapanam dravina danam, stanam niriya panam tata, esha hi brahma bandunam, vadonanya sti daikika, cutting the hair from his head, depriving him of his wealth, and driving him from his residence at the prescribed punishment for the relatives of a brahmana. There is no injunction for killing the body. 58. Putra soka tura sarve pandava saha krishnaya swanam ritanam yat krityam chakru niharanadikam. Thereafter, the son of Pandu and Draupadi, overwhelmed with grief, performed the proper rituals for the dead bodies of their relatives. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the second canto, seventh chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, The Son of Drona Punished. So Ashwatthama uh, performed, uh, Dronacharya uh, performed great penance to get a son from Lord Shiva. And he wanted a son who possesses the same valiance in human form as Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva was pleased and uh, bestowed upon him the son Ashwatthama. So it's explained that Ashwatthama is an expansion of one of the Rudras, just like Hanuman. Hanuman is also uh, an Ansh, a part of Lord Shiva. It's all, he's also said to be Shiva Putra. The energy, the potency of Lord Shiva is within these personalities. So therefore Ashwatthama was very, very, very powerful. There's an interesting verse in the Vedas uh, that says, uh, a verse in the Vedas states, daily remembering these eight mortals, Chiranjivis, the eight uh, main Chiranjivis, immortal beings. Uh, they are Ashwatthama, Bali Maharaj, Vyasadev, Hanuman, Vibhishan, Kripacharya, Parashuram, and Markandeya Rishi. These are the eight Chiranjivis. And it's, there's a, this verse says, anyone who remembers them can 
be free, one can be freed from all ailments and live for more than 100 years. So just see, just by remembering Ashwatthama, even though he did this uh, horrible act, but just by remembering him and all these personalities, what to talk about, you know, one gets free from uh, ailments, what to talk about remembering the Pandavas, what to talk about remembering Srila Prabhupada, what to talk about remembering Krishna, residents of Vrindavan, the benefits inconceivable. Ashwatthama was born <clears throat> with a gem in his forehead, which gave him the power over all living beings lower than mankind. Uh, this gem protected him from any attacks from of ghosts, demons, poisonous insects, snakes, animals, etc. Gave him inconceivable uh, strength. So he was very, very powerful. And Ashwatthama has been seen by many over the years. So when this jewel was taken from his head, we're going to uh, you know, come to where he's banished and it is ascribed that Krishna cursed, practically cursed him that you will roam around for the rest of the duration of Kali Yuga, uh, dying in pain, wanting death, but not getting death. And this wound will never be healed. So this is Ashwatthama's punishment. Consider the Pandavas were Krishna's devotees. He harmed Krishna's devotees. And it's like you could say he messed with the wrong people. So he harmed Krishna's devotees. Krishna does not take harming his devotees lightly. And Ashwatthama got punished. Naturally, Ashwatthama is a great soul, special soul in that sense. And he's learning his lessons through this atonement. And he's going to become Vyasadeva in, his, in, in the next cycle, Satya Yuga. And there's many uh, incidents, in, there are many um, recorded events of personalities over the years meeting Ashwatthama. And they've recorded this in different uh, books, writings, and articles. Right? In uh, this one employee, he went, you know, he was leaving his work and he went through the forest in Nausari. And while he was roaming around, he met a personality, and he saw this personality who was 3.9 meters high with you know, a wound on his forehead. And he started to speak to this person. Naturally, that was Ashwatthama. And Ashwatthama started telling him about Bhima and Bhima's strength. And he was telling me, he was telling me actually Bhima was more powerful than me, and he was more taller and stronger than me. So this is how uh, he got to know that this was Ashwatthama and Ashwatthama was glorifying Bhima and his strength and height. Then another incident is recorded in, 19, in uh, this was in, 19, in uh, 1192. This king, Prithviraj, uh, he lost the battle and out of betrayed, he left for the jungle. And in the jungle, he met Ashwatthama. So when he met Ashwatthama and he saw Ashwatthama and he saw this wound on his forehead, uh, Prithviraj was also well uh, versed in the knowledge of Ayurveda. So he told, uh, he didn't know who Ashwatthama was. He just saw this warrior, you know, this old man uh, with his wound. And he told this man that I can uh, help heal your wound. I'm expert in Ayurveda and I'm, I, I'm Guaranteed, I can help your wound. So for one whole week, Prithviraj administered medication on Ashwatthama's forehead to heal the wound. wound. And this wound just did not heal. Why? Because Krishna made it very clear, Ashwatthama, you're going to roam around like this with this open wound and suffer for the rest of Kali Yuga, duration of Kali Yuga. So Krishna's promise 
Krishna's word is ultimate. And when uh, Prithviraj saw that his wound wasn't getting cured, he, he got curious. He says, this is impossible. And then he thought, he said, this can only come if there was a gem on your forehead that was ripped apart. Who are you? And then Ashwatthama revealed what had happened and this king uh, could understand, yes, that's true, because otherwise uh, you know, the, the Ayurvedic treatment has to heal. And this is how, and then he always, this king recorded this. So this is like that. There are many uh, encounters with Ashwatthama. Naturally, he's a superhuman being. So uh, if he wants to show himself, in fact, it's described that he goes regularly to pray, uh, worship Lord Shiva at the temple. And when he comes there, the environment changes, there's wind, etc. And if people try to take a photograph, he immediately you know, vanishes. He is a supernatural personality. He will not reveal himself if he doesn't want. But from scripture, we can understand that he's still there. And he will be there helping Kali when, when uh, Lord Kalki comes. At the end, he will be helping Kalki. And he will also then uh, take uh, ownership of helping with the Vedas as Vedavyas. Next slide. So this brings us to the end of this chapter, chapter seven, verses 49 to 58. And next week, we're going to start a new chapter, chapter eight. Vantarat Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Chakur Bhuch Krishna ki jai. Any questions or comments? Mother Rasastali says, it's so amazing when you want answers, you open the Bhagavad Gita to any page and the Lord gives answers, either in the verse or purport directly. But as we keep hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we come across life lessons presented all the time. And for us, when we have any test or dilemma, we can use these lessons from Srimad Bhagavatam to solve our own life dilemma. Each chapter is so relishable, it helps order our own minds, minds too. Lord gives you your options, you choose. Yes. Shama says, if anybody wants to unmute, you also men have it. You can also unmute and share. Uh, Shama says, how has Ashwatthama got such a benediction to assume the role of Yasudev in the next yuga after committing such a heinous act? So consider he committed an heinous act, but he's in the fire of repentance. And we're going to come to that topic of repentance in this first canto. So we, when we get to there, we'll discuss that. Prabhupada glorifies the power of repentance. So because he was in the power of repentance, he got purified. And because he got purified of that, then he gets the boon, the benediction. Krishna uses him. So this is the beauty. Krishna doesn't hang us forever. Oh, you did this? I'm hanging you forever. No, the Lord is very kind. Prabhupada says you can make a mistake once, you get forgiven. Mistake twice, you're forgiven. Mistake three times, you're forgiven. Third time, you get booted. Fourth time, you get booted. So uh, Krishna is very kind. The pure devotees are very kind. They, uh, they allow you to make mistakes and learn from your mistakes. Ashwatthama, no doubt, did a mistake. He's suffering. He's atoning. Uh, it's a it, it's a it's a a um, befitting atonement that pleased both parties. He was killed and not killed. And he also learned. So Draupadi and everyone is, were Draupadi that did not want Ashwatthama to be killed, they got their side. Krishna and Bhima wanted Ashwatthama to kill, be killed, they got their side. And Ashwatthama, who, was, who committed the heinous act, he got purified. Why it's getting purified, and uh, then uh, gets further service. So this is the glorious uh, thing. Nobody is condemned eternally in Krishna's eyes. Every saint had a past, and every sinner uh, can become a saint. So every saint, no doubt, was engaged in sinning, had a past of sinning, and every sinner uh, can become a saint. There is absolutely no eternal condemnation in Krishna's eyes. Madhacharya says, why Krishna did not protect the five sons of Draupadi as he did with Parikshit March? Uh, 
because the five sons also have their journey. And therefore, uh, Krishna will remember the fact that Krishna allowed it means tick, it's perfectly beneficial for them. And we don't know, maybe that was, so look at it this way. Let's, we know that this is a drama. Krishna is orchestrating this amazing Mahabharata drama. And if this is a drama, the director of the script is Krishna. So why Krishna decides, okay, you just need to be here for so many hours. You need to be here for five minutes. You need to be here for you know, so many years and then you know, change your role. Each one Krishna is using, Krishna knows exactly how to engage them. So on, a, on one level, everyone in the Mahabharata is playing, playing their role perfectly well. We may not know everyone's life, their past and their future. Krishna knows. So therefore Krishna makes arrangements, perfect arrangement for everyone uh, in the Mahabharata, in Krishna consciousness, in relation to Krishna. So yes, we don't know the reason, but we know that what Krishna did and not apparently not protecting them. How do we know that killing them was actually the best form of protection? Right? It's Krishna's desire. Krishna, if Krishna wants to kill you, nobody can protect you. And if Krishna wants to protect you, nobody can kill you, which means that if Krishna wants to kill you, it's Krishna's desire, which is totally beneficial for you because he gives you a better situation. <clears throat> Consider, uh, let's see, trying to think of a personality that apparently seems like he's... Okay, so my, my mother, is, mother is saying, look at Marge Parikshit. So it seems that March Parichit got cursed, and that's unfortunate. But actually, the curse which Krishna allowed, and Krishna allowed, he didn't, Krishna didn't take the snake bird curse away, and March Parichit counteract the curse, but Krishna didn't take it away, and did and March Parichit didn't counteract. But it was glorious. The curse was a benediction. So, like that, we may see something as Oh, why didn't Krishna protect? But hold on. How do you know? In fact, saving them is the wrong solution. Hmm? Killing them is the right solution for their journey. Hmm? There, was, uh, there was the, the story of the minister and the king. And Prabhupada shared this beautiful story, the minister and the king. So. Uh, the, the minister was uh, always God conscious, Krishna conscious. He would see everything as Krishna's arrangements. And whatever happens in the kingdom, he would see it. This is my, he would tell the king, my king, king, this is the, this is the Lord's arrangement. So one day, uh, the king uh, cut his finger. And when the king cut his finger, and he asked, why is this happening? And the minister said, my Lord, it's Krishna's arrangement. And the king was so upset with that response. You know, I mean, how can cutting my finger be God's you know, arrangement? I mean, this is such a, a pathetic response, you know, such a shameless response. You know, I, you know, today I don't want you to come with me. God's put him in jail. And they put him in jail. They took the minister and put him in jail. Minister got put in jail. And uh, the king, like performing his normal duties, went out for hunting. As he was going out hunting, uh, he got caught. Uh, by a group of uh, Kali worshippers. The Kali worshippers, they wanted to offer a sacrifice. So they saw this king, they ambushed him, uh, they took him uh, for a human sacrifice, they put him on the altar, and they were ready to sacrifice him. As they were about to sacrifice him, the leaders of the, of the Kali worshippers noticed, oh, wait, 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 stop. Right? His finger is cut. He's not a fit offering for Kali. Because somebody that is a good specimen for offering needs to be intact. His finger is cut. Uh, let him go. He's not a foot uh, offering for Kali. So the king was left. Uh, you know, and when the king got saved, then he could remember 
what the minister said. Just see, it was Krishna's arrangement. Because if I didn't cut my finger, I would have been killed. So he was so happy. Uh, with this realization, he went, he released the minister and he thanked the minister and he's, you know, uh, he apologized and he rewarded the minister and he said, Minister, you're right. It was Krishna's, it was God's arrangement. It was Krishna's arrangement. Because if my finger was not cut, I would have been killed today. But because I cut my finger, I was saved. Then the, minister, then the king thought, but hold on. If everything is Krishna's arrangement, then how is it that me putting you in prison, in the dungeon, is also Krishna's arrangement? And the minister said, yes, uh, it is Krishna's arrangement. Because if, if you didn't put me in jail, I would have come with you. Your finger is cut. You are not, you're not, not, uh, not a fit uh, sacrifice, but I am. And they would have sacrificed me. So therefore, you putting me in jail was also Krishna's arrangement. So everything, if somebody is surrendered to Krishna, uh, then everything is Krishna's arrangement and wonderful. Bafana says, I don't, uh, I don't what, I don't know what my practice be without these classes. I always look forward to these classes. I found it very glorious to make time to always go back and study the text we passed on very closely for more understanding. They just keep me on my toes. I'm really thankful. Yes, they keep me on my toes also. <laughs> so uh, this, is the, this is the beauty uh, of Srila Prabhupada and Bhagavatam. When we understand the treasure chest of what we have, the jewels of guidance, just consider how many unfortunate souls are there that don't have this guidance, even on a practical level. And here we have volumes and volumes, and we only at Kento 1, chapter 7. We got 10, 12 Kentos to go through. And there's unlimited jewels of guidance, of knowledge. This is Prabhupada's love. This is Krishna's love. And yes, huh? we should huh? try to you know, make them part of our life. Take them to heart. And in this way, you will find that your life, Prabhupada and all the devotees, including myself, it will mold our life in the most glorious, in the most wonderful way, the most inconceivable way. And when we become molded and ready, then Krishna, as a puppeteer, can start using us for his service, for his pleasure. And then that will be even more exciting and more inconceivable. So we pray for that opportunity when we can imbibe all these instructions, purify our life, Come perfectly surrendered to Srila Prabhupada's mission and Krishna and be used uh, for the excitement of Krishna consciousness. Amabadi Radhika says, absolutely exciting lesson today. It felt for us like we were really there today in the past time. Super exciting. Thanks, Prabhupada, for explaining so nicely and making it so wonderful to hear. We are so grateful to your grace, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for being here. Madhutan Randy David says, Lord gives us the power of thought in abusing this minute, in, minute of independence. The repercussions are immense. Thank you for the amazing class. It's like, it's like cleansing of the heart. Many reach Mad Bhagavatam as a novel. How do we advise them to from here? By our own example, we can advise them. Example is better than precept. So if we reading Bhagavatam and we seeing how Bhagavatam is changing us and we seeing Bhagavatam in a different light, then simply by sharing that, don't instruct them, simply share with them your realization. Never instruct anyone where you don't have a relationship with and there's no faith and trust, mm -hmm. right? If there's no faith, trust, and you're not a spiritual teacher and they're not your disciples, don't instruct, uh, simply share. And everyone is welcome to share. Everyone is sharing, right? Facebook, uh, right, wrong, good, bad, everything goes. So 
most welcome to share. So you can share. Uh, this is my experience. And when you share, uh, that's all. You sharing without any expectation of result in return. You're not there to convert anyone. You're not there to change anyone. That is Krishna's business, not our business. Our business is simply to share. So you're most welcome to call that devotee and say, I'd like to share with you. Uh, we, we're doing this section, uh, chapter seven. It was so amazing. You know, I, I, this is what I learned. It's so amazing. And this is how I also experienced. I was in the same situation. You know, I'd like to share with you. Right? you know, please lend me your ears. And this is Krishna con consciousness. We come together and we can share. So please share. And if they, if they uh, gleam from your sharing, if they gleam some realizations, uh, then they'll be able to enter deeper. And we can pray to Krishna for them. Ras Bihari Prabhu says, can we say that it was due to past karma of the sons of Draupadi uh, that the killing was sanctioned? Yes. Remember, everything happens. So we don't know. I mean, I haven't gone into the details of who the five sons were. Uh, just like the, five, the sons of Bhishma, of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, Ganga, Mother Ganga, right? We know their history. Or even the sons of Devaki, we know their history. And we know that they were cursed to just take birth and be killed. And then they're back right, in, the, in the heavenly planets. So we know their past. I haven't researched. Um, in the past, in the sons of Draupadi, there definitely will be history. Uh, so we can even see it from that way. Uh, so immaterial, uh, in the material situation, Madri is saying the material, play, material world is not a nice place. So the, the sons are leaving, that's also glorious. The shorter we, the shorter we year in this material world, the, the better. Uh, and because they were, they were, they were Closely, they were sons of property, great, great soul, great sons. Yeah. So yes, they could be past historical karma. Uh, it could be just Krishna's mercy in, in, in the situation. Uh, they 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 taking that part just like KK. Right? KK had to you know do this service for banishing Lord Ram. Sometimes we don't like to take the bad part. You know, like in a drama, uh, we're giving different roles, right? Okay, who wants this role? I like this nice role. I like this nice role. This role, I don't want to be demon. So sometimes you don't like to take the, the bad roles, right? Or the short roles. So different roles for different uh, souls, but all related to Krishna, there for all purposes. Bafana Prabhu says, wherever there is misfortune in the material conceptualization, it seems there's something good that comes out of it. So much that temptation could be to pray that Krishna just shower, shower calamities. Yes, in every situation, it's how you see, just like COVID. So yeah, people are cursing COVID, and, but in every situation, it's how you take every situation and use it to become more Krishna conscious. When you use every situation uh, to rise above, to become Krishna conscious, then no situation, no calamity is disastrous. Consider how an eagle flies. When an eagle uh, sees a vast storm, the eagle does not go under the storm. The eagle does not escape the storm. The eagle faces the storm and goes right into the storm and uses that storm and the strong winds of, the, of that storm to rise above the storm. So we want to go into calamities uh, and take advantage of the calamities to rise to a higher level of Krishna consciousness. Now, you don't need to be like Queen Kunti to pray for calamities. They'll come on their own accord anyway, just due to our bear, you know, the baggage of karma. So whatever kar karmic calamities are coming, let it come. Uh, take it you know, with bravery and say, let it come. I am going to be Krishna conscious in every situation. Good, bad, ugly, war, no war, pandemic, no pandemic, good, doesn't matter. I'm going to take every situation and be Krishna conscious. If you take every situation, be Krishna conscious, then every situation is blissful and wonderful in devotional service. 
Mother Les says, Hare Krishna food. There was so much pleasure in today's transcendental class. Thank you so much. Everything is Sri Krishna and Krishna's. Just as Bali Maharaj knew that he didn't have much that is truly his to offer, his own to offer Lord Vamanadev after two steps except for his head of full surrender. Yes. Then it is then it is safe to say from a practical perspective that the only thing that truly belongs to the jiva is one, the ability to choose due to minute independence, correct? Two and three, the display of mercy, yes, and gratitude, yes, and the ability to love, yes. If all these things are done in relation to Krishna, then we can make our life perfect. Wonderful realization, correct. Now, we can only offer that which we have. Nothing in this world belongs to us. It all belongs to Krishna. But what can, what I can offer is my minute independence. I can offer my gratitude, my appreciation, and my love, my compassion. So yes, these qualities endear one to Krishna. And this uh, is the personification of the pure devotee. That the pure devotee completely uh, gives himself to Krishna in this way. Mother Achana Siddhi says, thank you. Thank you, Mother Achana Siddhi. Uh, Ras Bihari says, most of the time we don't like Krishna's arrangement. We could have thought of better engagements. Example, he made the material world uh, for our enjoyment then. He, most of the uh, arrangement then, right, we think, for example, he made the material world for enjoyment, yet he placed birth, death, old age, disease, and poverty in this world. So here's a very, yeah, and if we see everything, we should have the sutra. If it's connected to Krishna, coming from Krishna, it's good. Everything, Prabhupada says Krishna is all good, right? There is nothing bad about Krishna. Nothing that Krishna does is bad. Everything is good. So Krishna creates this creation for his pastimes. So that these wonderful pastimes that we are hearing in the Bhagavatam can be enacted. Because they cannot be enacted in the spiritual world. These pastimes are enacted in the material world. So really, Prabhupada writes in one purport in the, in the Shrima Bhagavatam, the material world is Krishna's kingdom of God. So it's Krishna's kingdom. It's his God. It's his, that means it's the spiritual world. And Krishna's performing pastimes here. And because we don't want to take part in Krishna's pastimes, Krishna says, okay, you can come to the material world and I'll give you birth that there's an old age which is for your benediction. For It's a boon so that you don't, you don't make it a perfect residence. You realize that you need to be in my pastime. Because that's, that's for your best self-interest. So it may seem like Krishna has made, made a bad arrangement, but he made a perfect arrangement. Krishna is perfect. Om Purnama, the Purnamidam. Uh, Krishna is perfect. And whatever comes out from Krishna, the small minute units, the spirit souls, and the material world, the universe, the creation, are all perfect. Meena, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you for today's most transcendental class. Your experience is so easy to understand. Thank you. Please bless me that I may continue by Krishna's mercy to be able to share my limited understanding. Prabhu, I had made a prayer to the Lord the time I got Srimad Bhagavatam that he spare me until I've completed reading of the whole Bhagavatam. And then he can do whatever he wants in so far as taking my life, if that is his desired end. Interestingly, interestingly, classes has empowered that I cannot have talk without bringing the name of Krishna and Prabhupada's glorification in it and giving books out. I am now identifying well with sharing and giving out books. I have Christmas gifts of just giving books to individuals, wrapping them so nicely and sending them away. This is exciting. Um, ex this is the excitement I'm experiencing. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much. 
So uh, Madri says, I want to, I, I need to share with you the pastime of the fisherman. Uh, so the fisherman was fishing Shijim Mahapubu in ecstasy. Uh, he went into the ocean and the fisherman uh, caught uh, Lord Chaitanya in his net. And he didn't know it was dark. He didn't know what it was. So he pushed, he pulled uh, the, 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 he, he was drawing the net in. And it so happened that he touched the body of Shijim Mahapubu and he went into ecstasy. He got, in, in, he got uh, infected by the bug of pure love of Krishna. And he started going, hurry, 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 hurry. He got possessed by this. And he was running. He thought he got possessed by a ghost. In the meantime, he got possessed by the bug of pure love of Krishna by coming in contact with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, when the associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were looking for Shijan Mahaprabhu, uh, when they saw this uh, fisherman running, hurry, 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 they knew, yes, he must be here because uh, no, this, this infectious disease uh, can only be when someone he comes in contact with Shijan Mahaprabhu. So your excitement uh, of uh, associating with Bhagavatam, spreading the proof of Srila Prabhupada, uh, you know, giving that gives out. This is uh, the infection, infectious disease of Krishna consciousness that is uh, very exciting. And when you get into it, the most amazing part of this path, of this excitement, is there is no end to it. There is no limit. It can become more and more and more exciting. So please continue uh, giving these books out. And what you can also do is the books that you give out, take the names of the people that are, that are, excite, and that are excited about the gift, uh, that are reading, that want to learn more, and in this way, you can give your association and culture and your experience and knowledge uh, by sharing with each other. So in this way, you start cultivating those that you're giving the books out to. And in this way, uh, you will become more and more Krishna conscious, more and more excited, and uh, you will be thanking Krishna. Life is so great. Rasaraj Prabhu says, the message of Srimad Bhagavatam becoming sweeter and sweeter. Next is prayers. Queen Kunti, yes. Master Stali says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, for another relishable class, Pafana Prabhu's gratitude is also so relishable. Yes. Madhvi says, thank you Prabhu for your wonderful association of uh, Shrishila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. So thank you all for sharing the wonderful feedback, the realizations. Uh, Pafana Prabhu, other devotees, Mother Lash, now uh, we value your feedback, we value your realizations. This is uh, what we meant to do. We meant to churn. Mm -hmm. One day we will come to where we go through the Bhagavatam and I read one verse and I read one purport and they, you know, they say, hell breaks loose. <laughs> that means Everyone sitting there cannot hold themselves but to share their Krishna conscious realizations. And one devotee of the other is sharing the, the depth of their Krishna conscious realizations. And this way, uh, we practically have a Krishna kata just with devotees sharing their realizations on that verse and purport. This is what association is meant to be. So like that, uh, you're sharing, you're giving feedback, you're giving your perspective, your realization. This is very valuable for our journey in Krishna consciousness. Uh, collectively, everyone has a different perspective. Everyone, Krishna is reciprocating in different multi, multi, multitudes of ways. Uh, Krishna is exciting and inspiring devotees, properties, doing that also in different ways. So when you share that, uh, this is very, very relishable. So thank you very much for all the devotees, for your association on a weekly basis. Uh, we pray that you all are safe and sound uh, during these times. Uh, but as we said, uh, you know, time can go on, life goes on.
but in association with the Bhagavatam, uh, this is real life. Uh, this is where uh, life exists in its eternal form. This is where we want to enter into and eternally service of Srila Prabhupada with Krishna and associates of Krishna, we want to eternally be uh, at their uh, lotus feet serving eternally. Thank you very much. Kwantarat Shimad Bhagavatam Kijai.